everybody, welcome back to more Road to Tier 10. We are on the Swedish line still, and this is the last of the mediums. This is the Leo. We now have it fully upgraded, although this is a replay uh, when I had it sort of midway upgraded. So this is with the 105, like the uh, the top big gun. You get two choices. You can use the, the smaller lower alpha 75 as well, uh, but I chose to use the 105. And this is it with the mid-engine upgrade, but without the top, top upgrade, which gives you better turret, uh, better engine. You do go up to 1,100 hit points when fully upgraded as well. But uh, I found it was pretty pretty manageable, even with this partial upgrade. I think it, even from stock, like I said in the other video, it wasn't a bad stock grind at all. There you go. You can see the uh, the increased alpha on that gun can dish out a lot more damage a lot more quickly than uh, than the other one. Arguably, uh, a lot of people prefer the smaller gun. It's you know it's a high rate of fire. I think it probably has better DPM. But for me, I prefer the bigger hitting one just because you don't really have much armor and I felt like even though the aim time is very bad, I prefer to just expose myself less. We, oui. um, Because, you know, if, if, if I want to, you know, if I want to do 700 damage with this gun, I've got to hit him twice. So I want to do that with the other gun. That's what, four or five shots minimum. So I'm going to have to poke out four or five times, hopefully not getting hit any of those times. With the big gun, I've only got to do it twice, right? So... You know, you might be exposed a little bit longer when you're aiming in, but for me, uh, for me, it works out better this way. It's a bit of a no-brainer, really. So yeah, like I was saying, it worked fine at stock. Once it was mid-upgraded, aside from the, the poor uh, track traverse that we talked about, the turning circle is, is absolutely horrendous. But once you get the mid-upgrade, you get some better tracks, you get a better engine, and it was perfectly, perfectly fine tank. And once you get it fully upgraded, it's even better. It's um, it's a nice little rounder, I think. It's quite, it's a bit big. The turret's quite big. It doesn't really have much armor, but um, but the gun depression's decent. I find the the maneuverability is good. I found the uh, the gun fairly reliable. The the pen's a little bit lackluster. I found the pen to struggle. Uh, kind of made me made me load prem a little bit more than I'd like when I was fighting, you know, same tier heavy tanks a few times, particularly when you're aim your uh, your reload time's quite long. It's pretty frustrating when you've, uh, you know, spent, what is it, seven or eight seconds reloading and then you bounce on, you know, where you think you've aimed for a weak point of an IS or a T29 and then you have to, uh, you know, have to try again. But, uh, yeah, apart from the little bit lackluster pen, it, it wasn't too bad at all. I, you know, I've, I've sold it. There's certainly, there's not been any, there's not been any keepers for me on this line yet, like there were on the, uh, you know, the German heavy line. I kept my VK36H, um, I 3 marked it, I kept the Tiger 1, I 3 marked that. Uh, I 3 marked the Tiger 2, but I didn't keep it because I didn't like it. And the E75 I kept as well. So uh, it'd be interesting to see if there's some keepers as I go further up this line. I've uh, I've unlocked the Emil now, actually. So this is going to be the, the last video of the Tier 7 for this line. Sorry, it's a bit of a short one, but, um, but we got through the, the Tier 7 quite quickly. So... My plan is to uh, to record some slightly longer ones for the, the higher tier ones, so the ML1. I'm going to record some live commentary on, on that for you. I've got that stock at the moment, so I'm going to show you uh, how that handles stock and see uh, see what you guys think of it as well, see if you guys got any tips for it. And then we'll maybe just try and do you know two or three episodes for each tier for 8, 9, and 10 as we go up. Hopefully, we can keep the momentum going. And we can, uh, you know, we can get to the end of the line in a reasonable amount of time. I'm still enjoying it; it's still, still good fun. So hopefully that can happen. So here we go. You can see it just dishes out some pretty, uh, pretty nice punishment. We've already got up to 10 pens, which is uh, pretty, pretty respectable for this vehicle with this gun. And certainly, uh, certainly made the uh, the grind pretty, uh, pretty easy. Really, I felt. So we're going to come back and, uh, and and revisit the other roads tier tens. Will be picked up at some stage, I think. The um, the French one, I feel like I'm going to record on that pretty soon. I reckon. I think this one's kind of taking priority because it's a bit more topical. But the French one will, will probably be uh, probably be coming to visit again soon. I'm not sure what's going to go on with Brit. I think I might free XP up to the uh, the next one, the uh, the tier nine, and see how that goes. But uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. There's a lot of content going on at the moment. Um, so you know, let, let me know. But I think uh, I think it'd be good to maybe just focus on getting the Swedish one done, and the odd bit of odd bit of the other ones every now and again, and then we can uh, maybe revisit those properly once uh, once Swedish heavies are out of the way. The next tank is of course the actual first heavy. This is the Road to Tier 10 Swedish heavies, but 
we've done seven tanks that aren't actually heavies. So nice to uh, nice to actually get onto a heavy tank that has a little bit of armor. It's got an auto loading gun, the Emil, uh, and it's uh, yeah, it's been been quite satisfying, quite fun. A little stock tank to use. I've only played seven or eight games in it so far, so um, not a ton. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to recording that and showing you uh, showing what the Emil can do. Then you go up to the Emil 2. Looks like a bit of a beefed up version of the uh, of the same thing. And then you go up to the uh, the Cranvan, <laughs> the uh, the Cranvan 3000, which is the the tier 10, which looks interesting. I hardly see any of them about in in game. I've, I mean, I don't play tier 10 a huge amount, but I spend a lot of time playing tier 7 lights or tier 8 or tier 9 and so you know I'm often in tier 10 matchmaking games and see very few of the cran van I don't know if that's um, you know maybe just because not many people have ground it out yet or it's not super popular I feel like you know real uh we got a nice little tracking shot there I was actually trying to shoot into his underbelly to uh to kill him but we got a bit lucky and got the uh got the track as well but uh, yeah, I don't see many of them about. I don't know if they're, they're not popular or what. I feel like there's been enough time for the hardcore people to, uh, you know, to grind out the cram van if they wanted to. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It'd be interesting. Um, hopefully I might enjoy it uh, a bit more than some of the other tier 10s because I tend to often get to tier 10 and then it's a little bit of a disappointment and then I'll just go and find something else to play after doing sort of 20 games in the tier 10 because you don't really, you know, don't have that. It's nice to have goals, right? So when you're unlocking other tanks, you're always working towards the next thing. But when you get to tier 10, you know, what are you working towards? So we'll see. We'll see. But there you go. So that was that game. We got 40,000 silver, nearly 5,000 XP, uh, mastery, and 3,000 damage. So, yeah, pretty pleased with that. Like I said, that was pretty uh, pretty typical. I, I didn't have any, you know, crazy, crazy high damage games in it. But I found that I was pretty regularly putting out you know, 2,500, 3,000 damage games were pretty common in the Leo with that 105 gun. Uh, and I had a pretty good, I'm not sure exactly what I left it as, I've sold it now. But uh, I think my win rate was some was over 60% in it. It was a lot higher at one stage, but it was, yeah, well over 60%. Uh, pretty much, you know, entirely solo. So, um, and, and when you've got the, uh, my gamer tag, you tend to get focused quite a bit as well. So I was pretty pleased with uh, with the win rate that I managed to pull out with my uh, with my lovely leo so there you go that's the end of the episode the end of the road to tier 10 tier 7 the leo i think it's a good tank i enjoyed doing it it's, i didn't love it enough that i keep it but uh but it wasn't painful to grind and uh and i don't think it'd be too too bad for you guys either compared to certainly some other tanks in world of tanks so nice one well, thank you very much for watching guys we'll be back soon with some more road to tier 10 to show you the ml1 my name is ben we are the beard guys and i'll see you next time